This is footage from the Russian MOD of paratroopers who are laying mines on paths that Ukrainian vehicles travel on. We're going to talk a little bit about how mines are affecting the course of this war, and we're going to look at an on-the-ground level of how challenging it is to disrupt and destroy these mines and why they're such a problem for Ukrainian vehicles. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so you can see, again, this is Russian thermal sites, which is interesting because it means to me that they are probably operating at night. And Russia is not known for having night vision devices, so it makes me think maybe this is happening at like dusk. I can also tell you I would not want to be laying mines in the dark because it is very easy to become slightly disoriented and travel towards the mines instead of away from the mines, and that's bad. So it's also possible that this is just during the day, but they're looking at it through these thermal sites simply to improve detection of the mines. Okay, so you can see here, these guys are... One, this is a... So I pointed this out in other videos, that even like Russian thermal sites that are not nearly as good as the ones Ukrainians are operating in, look at the precision, look at the detail you can get. You can see the style of this guy's beard. This is, and you can see through foliage, like these are extremely precise, especially in questionable weather conditions in dusk, it's very effective. And so you can see, it looks like they are arming the mines, right? And installing a tripwire. Generally, generally what you will see Russian forces do, they'll combine AT and AP mines, right? So Russian anti-tank mine, these are going to look like the Kansa things. And then we have Russian anti-personnel mine. Right? I just want to show you guys what we're looking at here. So if you're Russia, you're going to want to lay what are called anti-personnel mines. These are like thought of as little butterfly mines. And this is what they do, right? They are triggered by someone tapping these little feathers basically and they look like leaves right so they're meant to be planted in dense foliage and you just tip the feather and that's all it takes to set it off so it's very sensitive and it's very delicate and it's not very powerful in terms of the world of munitions but it's very deadly when it goes off because it's only activated when someone is literally touching it that's what makes it so scary right when we look at anti-tank mines these are different in some key ways. They take a lot of pressure to activate. They're designed not to be activated by human beings. You could, I wouldn't recommend it, but you could, in theory, stand on an anti-tank mine and like jump up and down, and you just wouldn't generate the force to activate it. Do so at your own risk. But you can see that the price of that, as you can see with this guy here, is that it means that you can clear these mines pretty easily if you're a light infantry soldier. You pick them up, you throw them somewhere. That's it. Unless they're surrounded by anti-personnel mines that you can't see. And so this was a common IED tactic, right? You'd have insurgents who would actually plant obvious IEDs or things that looked like obvious IEDs. And when our EOD teams would go to clear it, that's when the real IED, which was an anti-personnel mine, would go off. So that is the sort of danger that you see, and I think that's what these Russian forces are doing here. They are probably planting AP mines, or sorry, yeah, AP mines around an area that's already been laid with anti-tank mines. And again, it is really hard to see with this thermal site what exactly is happening. This guy looks very hot. really interesting that Russia would choose to release footage like this. I understand that they don't want their tactics to be known or exposed, but this is like very vague. This is like hard to discern, right? And it looks like he's armed it and thrown it. So yeah, it looks like he's winding it up, pulling it and then tossing it. So I think this is probably another kind of maybe AP mine. This is really interesting. Let's see if we can figure out what sort of AP mine this is. Let's see if we can find like a Wikipedia article maybe. Or like 
anti-personnel mine types. Yeah, I think oh, I think we can figure this out. Okay, here, look at this. So here is a photo. Let's see if we can open this image in a new tab. Oh, of PMN type of mines. All right, so I th it looks like he's deploying this kind of mine. You see how he's doing this winding and pulling something off and throwing it? This looks like the mine. So this says that from left to we're looking at a OZM, PMN4, PMN2, PMN1. So it looks like they're deploying either PMN4s or PMN1 mines. And this is an anti-personnel mine, again, that is going to be used. Probably these are also like step-on mines. But let's see if we can learn more about the PMN1. Also weird. PMN1 mine. How do you use it? Oh, yeah. PMN1. Yeah, I think this is it. Anti-personnel mines designed and manufactured in Russia, most widely used and commonly found devices in demining. PMN1 and 2. Okay, so it could be a PMN1 or a 2, actually, based on that sort of arming device. And yeah, weighs total weight 600 grams. It's also got a stab sensitive fuse, which means that if you're doing mine clearing, which you do generally with a knife very carefully, you're going to set this off. And of course, it's extremely dangerous to disarm PMN mines by removing the fuse, unless they've only been recently laid and in good condition. In this case, though, it's even hard to figure out which one they are. It's very easy to booby trap a PMN mine by attaching a pull fuse to it or by placing an anti-handling device underneath it. Very dangerous stuff. So I think that's what we're seeing here. That looks about right. I see, yeah, that looks like a small, and they're, see they're tossing them around, right? Even though it's tagged by the Russian MOD as them deploying mines against vehicles, you can see they're scattering all of these mines all over the field so that when Ukrainian troops try to clear them, they can't. I'll point out what I think is really interesting that both sides have started doing is using these carabiners hooked into hooked into the molly webbing of their back plate and that i think is as a carry handle so that if they need to be dragged from an area it's easy er and you can hook it into your own carabiner or hook it onto the front of your plate and you can drag your battle buddy while keeping your hands free That's my thesis anyway. It could be there could be another use. You see what I mean? These guys are just mining the whole area. Look at how fast it is to deploy these mines and how incredibly hard it would be. Imagine how long you'd have to work to get all these mines out. And they're deploying them in 30 minutes. Right? And now we're looking at drone footage. Let me just see. Uh, nope, there's stuff that explodes. Okay, we can't show this. But I will tell you what happens. It depicts Ukrainian... It's a drone observing Ukrainian tanks driving over the mines and hitting them. I don't know if they'll have personnel that also get hit. It doesn't... It's not clear. But you guys know what we're looking at here. Again, I can't show it for monetization regions. But it's not clear, like a lot of Russian stuff. It's not super clear that it's the same area. But hopefully you understand that... It's in a big, wide field, and when you have these big, wide fields, right, You, it's just so easy to deploy those anti-personnel mines, and it's so hard to clear. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining, and uh, yeah, hopefully you learned something.